Okay, I have three different castings here. One that we did on the video, um, this other one for the small hut, and I also have a casting here um, that I did for a retaining wall under a bridge. Now this one has um, already been, uh, I scribed uh, just some relief lines into it um, while the casting was still a little bit soft. And what I'm gonna do for these ones is just, uh, now this one's gonna be a, a vertical wall, of course. Uh, this one's gonna be vertical, this one's gonna be just a dock. So I'm gonna put a couple um, scratches into it, make it look like cracks. I'm just gonna take a knife and just dig those into it. The hydrocal is soft enough that they come up pretty good. And same thing for this casting here. Now there are some natural cracks in it already. Some flow lines from when I did it in the mold. I'll just add a couple more. And for this one, we have the rebar in there. And I'd like to get down to the to the rebar. in one area or something just to kind of make it a little interesting and then we can rust that area later on already now what I've done for this one is painted it a uh, testers flat dark gray number 1226 I like this color it's kind of a light gray it's dead flat um, I use this for most of my roads and uh, most of my concrete um, and then uh, second, after I after I painted this color, um, I cover everything with a layer of testers dull coat um, to seal that, so that when I do the weathering over top, it doesn't soften the gray and expose the white underneath. Now this retaining wall, um, I did a aged concrete polyscale, uh, and you can see hopefully that uh, it's much more yellow than the gray. Now in this part of the country I notice concrete is uh, much more gray um, but in some areas I guess uh, because they use a sand uh, mixture in the concrete and it comes out much more yellow um, but I like to start with the gray and then uh, I use a bit of uh, yellow in the in the end uh, sort of raw umber. Um, so that's the um, step two was, uh, as I mentioned, painting the gray and the dull coat. Now uh, we're going to give it a mottled effect, and what I use for that is some powders. I have uh, either AIM powders, which is a, a light gray, and uh, I have some pigment here. Uh, this one is called Concrete. It's by uh, Mig Jimenez. Um, Mig is a line of uh, paints, um, mainly as I've mentioned, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned in other uh, videos, but uh, they're marketed towards the military modeling guys. And AK Interactive, um, same sort of thing as the, as the MIG. Uh, this one is European Earth, but it's kind of a, a light gray color as well. So I'll, I'll mix those and, and vary them on the uh, surface. Now to do that, I also use a pigment fixer. Now. You could also use a uh, dull coat, uh, probably an enamel based dull coat would uh, work well, uh, work as well. Um, I just take some of the pigment fixer, put it into a tray or a paint tray, either one. And then we, and now this, uh, this evaporates pretty quickly, so you have to work uh, fairly quick with it. And then we'll take some of the gray powder. I probably have a little too much of the liquid in there, but anyway, I'll use some of the powder. And I just put that in there, into the pigment fixer. I mix it together, and I don't know if you can see it, but it creates kind of a kind of a slurry. Um, you know, leave it fairly thick, and I just dab it on. And when that dries, that's going to create a very 
mottled effect for the concrete. I'm just using a stiff bristle brush, but any brushes would be good for this. And the good thing about this, see the um, the the crack or the the cuts that I put into it, the pigment really collects in the crack and really highlights it. So want to make sure there's no brush lines in the pigment and not too dabby. But that should be pretty good. Okay, and we'll do the same on this one. And if you have more liquid, um, it flows a lot better. See here, it all flowed into the uh, to the crack or the recess around the edges. It's almost, you know, you can almost consider this a wash. It's it's very similar. It probably has more pigment in it than a regular wash. Now for this one, um, let's try the concrete color more of that it's it's more of the beige so and I'm using the same same dish so I'm mixing some of the gray with this yellowy color Don't be afraid to mix different colors together so you get lots of variation. Okay, so that's it. Now it's just a matter, this is drying really fast. The pigment fixer uh, evaporates quite quickly. Um, you can see the model effect on there and on here. So I'm just going to let these dry and, um, uh, and then give it another uh, coat of dull coat. Okay, so the pigment uh, has dried and I've put a, another uh, coat of uh, dull coat on here to seal the surface you can see none of the pigment comes off now if I do that before I did the dull coat um, you could uh, uh, you could brush it and you would get pigment on your on your hand but it's uh, it's pretty dry now um, so the next step is I'm gonna do another wash because um, you know darken darken the lines uh, and the cracks and so forth and to do that I'm using a raw umber oil paint. Now this is a pretty common wash uh, for, for weathering purposes. Um, just need a dab of it. Uh, I did this on do this on a lot of my structures to just to give them an old uh, dusty look. And I'm using mineral spirits. This one's a white spirits from AK Interactive 
for enamel products. Um, it's good for um, a wash and to thin out oil paints. And then now we are going to just mix the two together. So that's pretty heavy. I'm just going to highlight the cracks. Actually, a little darker than I'd like, but it'll dry a little lighter. Put a couple spots on here. And don't forget to, um, around the base, we want to darken that quite a bit near the ground. It's always going to be darker down there. All the dirt's going to wash down and settle around the base and get a lot of splash. Great thing about oil paints, you can go back and work it a little more. If, you, if it's too thick or too heavy, you got plenty of time to just use a little, little more mineral spirits or turpentine or whatever thinner you're using, and uh, yeah, just wash a bit of it off. Don't be afraid to darken some areas. If you got oil spills or something like that, I mean, it's uh, this is what what to use to create that effect. Okay, not bad. And um, other product that I like to use uh, for concrete is the AK Interactive Wash. Um, these are a wash for gray decks and a wash for light gray, sh a streaking grime for light gray ships. So it's um, it has a gray gray base to it, and it just creates more contrast you know if you get some dark gray spots or you can put it in the cracks that's starting to look pretty good Okay, so we'll let this dry and uh, see where we're at with that. Okay, so before I do the last step, um, I've pretty much completed the um, washes and so forth. Um, while I was off camera there, I just did a little more wash in some of the cracks along here um, some gray wash uh, just to bring those out a little bit more um, no there's nothing stopping you I mean you can layer and layer and layer and just uh, keep adding uh, more colors more variegation if you don't like it just uh, you know cover it up so um, but I'm pretty happy with the way it is now um, so the last step I'm going to do is um, 
use some pan pastels um, to this this pan pastel here is uh, raw umber um, now it's it's much lighter than the raw umber oil paint that uh, we were using before this has uh, the pan pastel has much more of a beigey sand color into it, in it and um, this is uh, perfect for uh, concrete um, it's kind of a little bit darker sand color than the uh, aged concrete and it's a little more of the yellow than the uh, gray base um, that I've used on this one so um, it's uh, it's sort of perfect uh, I think um, and also I could use a little bit of uh, dark gray here uh, probably just around the the bottom a little bit uh, just to bring out that uh, shadowing again at the at the bottom make it look uh, more weathered like uh, you know it's close to the ground and um, it's been splashed a lot and a lot of grime on there also if if you have an entrance um, uh, or anywhere a uh, train is going to be passing under this um, this dark gray is perfect for you know kind of smoke or exhaust that would uh, show up on the on the concrete so you can uh, just you know darken some areas and um, it helps blend all of the uh, variegation and the and the blotchy colors underneath um, by doing the pan pastels on top so I'm just uh, this really blends everything together quite well and do a bit on this one too just to create some darker shades in here now I have a lot of different colors on this one already I have a light beige um, the dark umber from the oil paint and now I'm adding a little bit of the black probably more a little along the bottom here all the dirt and so forth is going to be washing down off the wall and collect around the base here The, the pen pastels are it's a different effect than the washes the washes um, this is not a smooth surface so um, the washes get down in the cracks and they'll highlight the bottom of the crevices right the uh, the enamel takes it down to the bottom of the cracks and crevices whereas um, uh, pan pastels they're sitting on top of there because you're not the brush isn't getting down into the cracks and so forth so you're you're shading the the tops surface a lot more and um, whereas if you were to use an airbrush to do this weathering the airbrush will cover everything it'll cover the top surfaces and the bottom surfaces and it creates a very uh, monochrome finish whereas with washes and pastels you get um, you know much more variation and definition than you would with uh, an airbrush okay and now I'm going to use the raw umber and I pretty much cover the whole surface with the raw umber just to make it look, look a little more dirty um, sort of dusty and um, to sort of blend all the all the colors together okay that's looking good I do this one I use the pan pastels a lot more on structures 
than I do on say rolling stock or engines although they are pretty good on engines and what I like to do with um, you know with rolling stock is use a micro brush and you could do little shading or highlights uh, with some of the dark colors